Okay, so I've had the Leica M2 for a little while now, and uh, I've spent a long time shooting, uh, as anybody who follows the channel, uh, Nikon SLRs, but lots of other SLRs. Um, and this is my first proper rangefinder. Um, I've had some FEDs, XA, and a few other things, but uh, I spotted this Leica at a very reasonable price. Um, actually, not a huge amount more than this F2 cost me. Um, and I thought, well, I'll take the plunge, and I'm going to get it serviced as well, and then it'll really be like new. And I, I get my I get my Nikon camera serviced as well, so that then they'll last another lifetime. Um, so these are kind of my initial thoughts, really, on the Leica M2, and I think some of this is is specific to the M2. Uh, things that I I like, and things that I'm kind of having to get used to. So the things that I really like are I like the viewfinder. I like being able to. Um, as in kind of a previous video, I like being able to see outside of the frame lines, which I'm not used to. With an SLR, you just see what you're going to get when you look through the viewfinder because you're looking through the lens. But with a rangefinder, you just have that thing where you can see what's coming into the frame, which is which is good fun. Um, and kind of taking portraits, uh, you can kind of frame them and you can kind of think, oh, if I move it an inch to the left, you know what's an inch to the left. You know, it's not outside of the frame. You can kind of frame things up a bit more. So. That's really cool. I'm liking the size. It's a bit smaller than SLR. Um, I like the looks. I think it's a gorgeous camera. Uh, I like the fact that the Leica M2 and probably more so the M3, they're kind of that uh, historic 35mm camera. they kind of got a lot of history to them. Um, I like how smooth they are. Uh, to this, this is just to advance the film. And, and sort of move the shutter. It's all just really lovely. Um, and I'm kind of, I'm liking the small lenses and gradually building up a, this is my first Leica lens, which again, this wasn't very much. These, I mean, everyone thinks like Leica lenses are really expensive, uh, like thousands of pounds. And this lens was 150 pounds, um, which, you know, that's about what you'd pay for a Nikon lens, um, and you can pick up lots of Russian lenses. And the thing, the secret really with lenses is to, with as I'm getting, get, finding out, as I'm kind of getting into the rangefinder system and the Leica M mount, is you don't have to buy M mount lenses, buy, buy M39 screw mount lenses, and you just adapt them. This is adapted um, with a tiny ring that you can't even see, and that's it. It fits and couples and works perfectly, and is a fraction of the cost of M mount lenses. And then in time, if I can afford it, I'll buy in mount lenses. Um, yeah, I mean, it is a lovely camera to use. Loading film is definitely a bit more of a faff, a bit harder than on an SLR. I've got a film in here, so I'm not going to take the back off. But um, there'll be other videos you can watch on that. But you, you know, you you take the bottom plate off, and you have to load the film into a spool first, and then push push the film and the spool in at the same time. And I'm tend to find the film sort of buckles a bit there and I have to kind of try and get the tension out of it. And um, But I've managed to do that while walking along. So, you know, I've only shot a couple of rolls of film, so it just get easier and easier. Um, I remember first loading film into some SLRs and sort of trying to feed the end of the film through the little the, the canister, uh, the wind-up take-up spool here. It was a bit tricky. I remember learning to shoot film on a Rolia Flex and how you have to feed the film through on that. No, you know, you just get used to these things, don't you? So, um, so it's an absolutely lovely camera. I can't see can't see myself ever selling it. Um, not for the price I paid. Um, it really was a bit of a bargain this one, but half of what they go for on eBay is what I paid. Um, things that I'm getting having to get used to that uh, I'm not so keen on at the moment um, are the button version of the M2 is you could very easily press that button. When you reach in to get it out of a camera bag, you have to kind of think, I have to mentally think, don't press the button down. Because if I press the button down, that engages the rewind. And uh, I'd have to wind it on to make the bottom button pop back out and that would waste a frame. Um, I actually haven't managed to do it yet, but I come so close to the, touching this, pushing this button down. Um, there's also like a little collar around the button, which is, 
sort of loose, which uh, I'm not sure. It sort of rests against the body, but it's a little bit loose. And I don't know, maybe when it gets serviced, that ring will kind of be a bit more uh, sprung against the body. Um, so that's just, I can see why they changed that to a little lever rewind. But then there's an argument for saying that the button rewind is kind of the nicer looking, less cluttered looking body. So it's kind of pros and cons actually. And as I say, although I haven't yet managed to accidentally press that button, it does feel a bit like I could do if I wasn't careful. Uh, and I, I like the M2 without the uh, the self timer. I think that if that was there, then I'd be accidentally catching that as well. Um, other things I found out were I ordered some caps for the back and then when they arrived I realized they don't fit because on this M2 it's actually been updated so these little rings inside here I mean that these the flash sinks fit uh, a more modern flash sink lead than the original Leica M2 and M3 ones so that's actually an advantage so I'm glad that that's happened but I spent some money buying caps for the back of this that will never fit it um, again on the base here the tripod hole, standard tripod hole on an M3 and an M2 is much bigger and I've bought a little uh, screw that goes, in, uh, like an adjustment screw that goes in there and it makes that smaller. So you just screw it in and then that becomes like a standard tripod mount, which is really useful. When I bought, I bought an original uh, kind of like an M2, M3 leather case from the 50s and 60s. And when it arrived, it wouldn't have, it actually bizarrely, although it was an original one, it was designed for this smaller screw size. So had I not ordered one of those things, it was only like a pound, but you screw that in, it meant that this would then fit with that case. Um, so that's something you need, might need to think about buying. Get those on the, off eBay, little screws, a couple of quid. Uh, but the main thing at the moment I am struggling to get used to, uh, and it's not, I, lo I don't mind doing that and rewinding it. That's fine. It's actually quite, quite fun to do. I like the look of that. It's not that, uh, if you're thinking it's not the button thing, it's not loading the film. It's not having to buy adapters to get you to get that to, that's all fine. That's all uh, actually, once you've done it, once you're used to it, it's, it, it's kind of quirks and, Kind of part of, part of the loveliness of owning an M. The, the one thing that I wish that, that, that they they thought of is on an SLR when you are like that and you've wound it on. Just check there's no film in here. Do that to check there's no film in here. Right, there's no film. Right. If I wind that on, right. Hang on. Well, this isn't a good example actually, but on because <laughs> the M2 uh, has the same problem. Um, but when on most SLRs, once the once the um, re advanced uh, lever is pushed in, you can't push that down. Okay, the M2 actually suffers from the same problem as the uh, F2 suffers from the same problem as the M2. But something like a, a Nikon F3 or, or something, you. Um, you, you wind it on and you go, oh, I don't want to take the photo. You push that in and you can't push that down, okay? Um, or you can move this to like a lock position and you can't push that down, right? With the M2, um, and I've got a film in here and it's already cocked. I'm, I'm in the habit after years and years of SLRs of taking the photo and then winding it on. And that's something I shouldn't do because with the M2, there's no way of even with this pushed in. So when that's pushed in, that will still take the photo. Push that down, it'll still take the photo. There's no way to lock the collar, you know. So I have taken a photo, wound it on, put it in my camera bag, taken it out, and it's like a hair. So one of the advantages of a lot of, of a Leica, but is this is but also slightly irritating here. So that's like a hair trigger. I only have to slightly touch that. And takes the photo so i've probably lost on every roll of film i've shot so far probably four shots per roll where i've accidentally pressed it and that's my fault i need to learn that when i take a photo from now on i don't wind it on because you can't take a photo if it hasn't been wound on 
and that's just something I need to get used to. And I think that's the case with the M3 and the M2. I don't know if they you posted in the comments whether they did something with the with the M4, the M5, and certainly I think with the M6 and the M7 where they've got light meters, I, I would imagine when that's pushed in, the light meter is off and you can't take the picture. Um, but I do wish there was like a little like a lock thing on the collar, or if that was pushed in, you couldn't then depress the shutter. Uh, that would be quite nice. But um, but that's the only thing. I think everything else is lovely, and I like it. And I'm uh, just some of it's getting used to it. I'm and but just having that smaller size, you just hold it in one hand. It kind of fits in a pocket. Um, it's a lovely camera and certainly I recommend the M2 and I still see them go on eBay um, for you know some of them are like over a thousand some of them are half that price so it, condition seems to be everything with the like because if you don't mind a few marks on the top plate uh, and I've replaced the the leatherette on the back here you can't tell so that all that that was all coming off and I just uh, chipped it all off and put a new one on and I could, I've got the skin to redo this as well, but this is pretty good, so I don't see the point in replacing it. There's just one little bit there, but I'm not going to replace the original skin for that. Um, so let me know your thoughts on owning an early Leica. I'd love to know what your kind of thoughts on what you're thinking about about them if you're thinking of getting one. Uh, and like and subscribe, and I'll make more videos. Thank you.